Good morning, everyone. Happy Monday. I hope that you're all having an awesome day. Welcome back to our weekly Minx Monday Q&A. Before we get started, let me share the bag that I'm currently rocking from my kitchen to my living room. That is the beautiful Gucci Petite Marmont wallet on chain. All right, so let's get this show on the road, shall we? Starting with the first question from Tina Griffiths. Within luxury goods, what item has been your biggest waste of money and why? Okay, so <laughs> this this one's a tough one, and I had to be realistic. Um, I definitely don't like to call it my biggest waste of money. I don't see it that way. However, it can definitely, most definitely be argued. Um, okay, so my biggest waste of money would have to be my Louis Vuitton Speedy 30 Multicolor White. Um, and the reason why is because I never use that handbag. I never ever use that handbag. I only took it out of the dust bag and that's that's about as far as it went. Um, and in the past, I've had other handbags that haven't worked out for me, but I use them. I use them, you know what I mean? But with this one, I just couldn't bring myself to use it. I don't even like saying that it's my, my biggest <laughs> waste of money because I don't see it that way, you know what I mean? Now, let me give you guys a little quick you know, let's do some story time, a little quick backstory on it. So with the Speedy 30 Multicolor, uh, when I first saw that handbag, I immediately fell in love. That was my dream bag. It was my unicorn bag. It was my end all be all bag. I mean, I just thought it was the greatest thing since sliced bread. So fast forward to years later, I had the opportunity to add this bag to my collection, but not only that, I was able to get it from the Louis Vuitton store on the Champs-Élysées in Paris. So that to me felt like one of the most surreal moments in my life. I know that sounds so dramatic. I mean, you're just like, calm down. It's just a bag, right? Um, but that's the best way that I can describe it. I felt so, I like, I, I didn't even know. I was speechless. I didn't, I, I, I'm speechless now thinking about it, you know? but it was one of the most surreal moments I have ever had. And I was just like, I can't believe, I can't believe I have this bag. I can't believe it's in my hands. I can't believe it's mine type of thing, you know? Um, so I was just on cloud nine. Now, fast forward to a couple of years later, I still couldn't bring myself to use this bag. I would sit there and admire it. Like I said, I took it out of the dust bag. I would admire it. I would never use it. I would never use it. I didn't want anything to happen to it. I didn't want, I didn't want it to turn yellow. I didn't want it to get any type of color transfer. I didn't want, I just wanted it to stay in the most perfect condition and just have it sit there. But we all know that doesn't work out for me either. You know, so to be honest with you, I was so caught up in getting this bag in wanting this bag in dreaming about this bag that not once did it pass through my mind of how it would actually work out for my lifestyle. So that's why I've said in the past, um, there have been many times when I like the idea of something, but when push comes to shove, it just might not work out for my lifestyle, either because I'm crazy or because I, I, I don't know, I put them in a bubble or what have you, you know? So that was, this is one of those bags. And every time I think, I think of new bags, I always, always end up thinking about the Speedy 30 and how I just couldn't bring myself to use it. Now I ended up selling it. I don't regret it at all um, because the fact that I was able to have that bag and to to make that dream a reality was just, it's by far one of the best memories that I ever have because I always remember that trip. It, I mean, it automatically just transports me to being in that boutique on the Champs-Élysées, you know, in November. And it was just, it was amazing. It was absolutely amazing, you know? So I wouldn't necessarily call it my, <laughs> my biggest waste of money <laughs> um, because I did get a chance to, to get it. And I did get that experience and I do have that memory attached to it, but in terms of actually using it, um, in that case, it would be my biggest waste of money because I never, I never ever used it. And I'm sure you're probably thinking, well, now that you have the Petite Noé in the same color, you know, um, do you regret not, you know, do you regret selling that one because you end up using this one? Um, definitely not. And I think it's because I ended up putting that bag 
this is gonna sound ridiculous, but I ended up putting that bag in a pedestal or on a pedestal and I just didn't want anything to happen to it. I just wanted it to stay forever in like a glass case where, where the air couldn't touch it either, you know, so. Either way, that, that doesn't work out for that doesn't work out for me um, because I want to be able to to use them even if they're bags that I don't use too often. Even I mean I still use them, but with this one I just um, I couldn't I couldn't do it <laughs> I couldn't do it. I know I all right don't make fun of me, uh, but I just I couldn't do it. So that would have to be the the I guess my most expensive. <laughs> in terms of cost per wear. Um, I know that's just semantics, but <laughs> that's just the way that I see it. Uh, but I would love to hear your guys' thoughts on this question. Uh, when it comes to luxury goods, what has been your biggest waste of money? Um, you know, be it a handbag, small leather goods, shoes, whatever the case may be, let us know in the comment section down below. Am I turning red? I feel like I'm turning, <laughs> turning red just thinking about it. Anyways, that was a long one. Um, but a fantastic, fantastic question and hopefully I was able to answer it. Next question from Dan and Teeters. Hopefully I said that correctly. What do you think of the Dior 30 Montaigne in fabric or grained leather? I am interested in it, but worried about the wear and tear for both materials. Any feedback about these materials? Also, I worry about the heavy price tag, especially for the fabric and I worry about resale value if it doesn't work out. Um, fabulous, fabulous questions. And before I get any further, let me insert a picture of the Dior 30 Montaigne right now. I think that this bag has such a beautiful silhouette and it offers so much. At first I thought it kind of reminded me of the Chanel Le Boy bag, uh, but it definitely doesn't. It has other details that um, that really end up making it completely different. Um, now between the fabric and the grain leather, unfortunately I don't have any personal experience with grain leather, but when it comes to the fabric, when it comes to the oblique, I think the greatest thing about the Montaigne is the fact that it does end up having the, the leather, um, the leather uh, on the edges. So that way I think it ends up helping out a lot better for wear and tear. Now, the craziest thing about this is that when I was looking on the website, I had to do a double take because uh, they have a ton of different colors, a, a ton of different you know details that you can go for. But the thing that just caught my attention the most is that the fabric, um, the fabric Montaigne with the blue oblique and the uh, the leather, the grain leather, they're the exact same price. Uh, and I'm actually going to insert a couple pictures because they do have two of the fabric ones. Uh, one of them has a detachable adjustable strap, which I think is awesome. And the other one just has an adjustable strap. So um, let me insert a picture of those side by side. And now let me insert a picture of the grain black with the uh, with the blue oblique side by side. All right, so all three of those bags are the exact same price. If you end up going for the fabric with the adjustable leather strap, if you end up going for the blue fabric with the adjustable removable strap, or if you go for the grain leather, they are all the exact same price. I thought it was going crazy when I was looking at the website. I kept going back and forth. Well, there is no way. I think that is amazing. Now, the difference between the two for me personally, um, I do love the fabric. I think it is. Uh, I think it is absolutely gorgeous. And seeing as how it is the classic print as far as the blue one goes, um, it's it's a staple to the fashion house. So because of that, it does end up holding its resale value in my opinion. Uh, but in my heart of hearts, if you can end up going for the all leather one, I feel like that will end up wearing a lot better uh, as time goes by, especially with the grains, will end up helping it to look fabulous for long periods of time. Again, these are the, these are just my assumptions, only because I don't have any of the grained uh, leather from, uh, from Dior, so I can't say from personal experience, but that's just the way that I end up seeing it. I mean, I love the fabric, I think it's great, um, but, for the same price to get an all leather handbag, I, I would prefer to go for that, you know? And um, don't get me wrong, I love the fabric bags that I have, but I'm, in my opinion, nothing beats leather when it comes to the price points of these items. But yeah, they're $34.50. For, for either fabric or leather. But again, if any of you guys have any, if you, if any of you guys have the Montaigne in the grain leather, let us know how you find it. Or if you have the fabric Montaigne, uh, let us know how you find that as well. 
The more information that we have, the better. Uh, but I do think it is a beautiful, beautiful silhouette. And if you end up going for um, whichever one you go for, the grained or the fabric, the fact that you can adjust the strap, it is detachable. I love the silhouette that it has. Um, and it's very simple, but I welcome your guys' opinion on this bag. Let us know if you love it, do you hate it? Any, any recommendations that you have, the better. So I don't know if, if this has been able to help you out. I feel like I was all over the place with this question, so my apologies. Um, but I think they're both beautiful. I don't think you can go wrong with either. But between the two, as far as wear and tear goes, I would end up choosing the all leather for the same price point. Uh, but I'm really excited for you and whichever one you decide to go for, major, major congratulations. Next question from Linda Huntington. I know that you said that you don't use your jumbo because of the weight. What are your thoughts on the Chanel single flap? Would you trade one for the other? Um, okay, so when it comes to the Chanel single flap, I absolutely love it. And in my opinion, it's like the best of both worlds because you have the size of the jumbo without the weight, which I think is fantastic. And for the longest time, I always thought that the single flap, um, because it doesn't have the double flap, would end up losing its shape a lot easier. And over the years, I've had so many of you guys send me messages and show me pictures on Instagram uh, that your single flaps haven't lost um, as much shape as, much shape as, uh, as I would have thought, which I think is fantastic fantastic and not to mention that now you can end up getting an organizer to help maintain that shape as well unfortunately they no longer make the single flap so you do have to go on the pre love market in order to find one but uh, they have awesome price points as well a lot of them a lot of them are in great great condition and again the fact that you can get them at awesome savings I think is wonderful now as far as trading one out for the other um, I will admit there has been a time when I have thought about doing that, but it's the fact of, of letting go of this one first <laughs> that just kind of holds me back from it, kind of like what I talked about in my um, in my black handbag collection video. It's my least used. I do use it from time to time, but that weight just drives me nuts, and I feel like I can't, I mean, it has so much sentimental value. So it's not like I could just be like, oh, okay, you know, go ahead and get rid of it because I can't detach from it. You know, I've tried to detach from it. Uh, so I feel like the only way that that would work is if I end up getting the single flap first and see how I like it, see how it ends up working out for me. And then I can end up selling the, the double flap. But my biggest fear is that I end up falling in love with the single and I still can't let go of the jumbo, which definitely, <laughs> definitely wouldn't end up working out for me, you know? So in one of the, in that case, I feel like I have to, I can only have one or the other. And until I can either get past my phobia or my craziness or my lunacy, whatever it is, um, then I think that I would go for the single flap. But yeah, I'm a huge, huge, huge fan. You get the, the size of the jumbo without the weight. And I think they are just insanely beautiful bags. And not to mention the fact that they don't make them in the, anymore. And the, the quality of those handbags is just, um, it's, I feel like it's incredible. So huge, huge fan. Yes, I have definitely thought about getting one, uh, but great question and hopefully I was able to answer it. Next question from JCB. Can you share whether you like the Gucci Globetrotter beauty case? I know that you got to try it. Can you share your experience and whether you think it's worth the price? All right, so let me insert a picture of the Gucci Globetrotter beauty case right now. This item comes in at $1,980 here in the States, and I did get a chance to try it out through Glam Shock about a year and a couple of months ago. And I gotta say, the craftsmanship on this beauty case is just insane. It is so, so beautiful. It does feel a little bit heavy. Once you start to put your items inside, it can definitely um, it can definitely feel pretty heavy. And I did check out the website just to see how much it weighs. Uh, this case weighs in at 2.5 pounds. Uh, so again, once you start to put your items inside, it might feel like, um, <laughs> it might be a a little intense. I did end up using it crossbody because of that. I felt that using it crossbody helped to alleviate that um, that weight a little bit more. And I also used it on my shoulder, but I definitely preferred it crossbody. Uh, now I have to be completely honest with you because I didn't fully experience this bag the way that I normally would when it comes to my own handbags because I was borrowing it. So I didn't really put it through the ringer. I really didn't do, um, like I said before, things that I would normally do with my own handbags just because I couldn't fathom uh, damaging it, you know, and it's not like I'm the type of person that, um, 
ends up throwing my handbag on the ground or I end up hitting it against walls and stuff like that. Not at all. I am clumsy. I've told you guys this before. I am, uh, I am pretty clumsy, but still I don't want anything to happen to it. I kind of put it in, I kind of put it in that bubble. And sometimes I felt like I wanted to just keep it like far away, from, not far away from me. That sounds, that sounds kind of silly, but I kind of had it away from my body just because I didn't want anything like to touch it, <laughs> you know, but the times that I did use it cross body, um, I felt that it, it wouldn't necessarily stay in place. Sometimes I felt like it would end up uh, swaying back and forth. So it didn't necessarily drive me nuts, but, um, it was, um, it was something that I ended up noticing, but still, um, I didn't fully, fully, you know, experience it. And I can't really give you like the good, the bad and the ugly because I was terrified of anything happening to it. I just wanted them to get it back in the exact same condition that I received it. Um, so yeah, borrowing handbags definitely, um, I, I, I can't do it. <laughs> I can't do it, you know, but, um, as far as the craftsmanship of the item, I do think that it is so, so beautiful. And because of the materials that it has and just the structure that it has, I love the fact that, um, it has that structure and you don't have to worry about it necessarily turning into a beautiful mess, which I definitely appreciate about uh, traveling beauty cases anyways. Um, but I felt like when it comes to vanities or when it comes to beauty cases that people end up using as handbags, even though this says a top handle bag on the website, I felt like this is definitely the most user friendly because um, it does end up, uh, you're able to either close it up with the key that it comes with, or you can just open it up instead of having that side zipper because that side zipper kind of like this guy might be a little bit fussier, but with the, um, the Globetrotter beauty case, I felt it was a little bit easier to get in and out of. So I also wanted to throw that out there just in case. Um, but again, I just wasn't I wasn't able to fully, fully, you know, give you the ins and outs of it because I was, I was terrified. <laughs> I was terrified that anything would happen to it. So unfortunately I don't have, you know, as much information as I would like, but hopefully what I did share has been able to help you out. And if you do decide to go for it, major, major congratulations on that Globetrotter beauty case, because it is absolutely gorgeous. So fabulous question. And hopefully I was able to help. Next question from Patty Graff. I recently watched your black handbag collection video. You said that you only reach for your Chanel black caviar mini when it's raining, etc. I just bought a black lambskin mini and I'm curious what happens to lambskin if it gets wet. I don't plan on it being an everyday bag, but I also want to use it without worrying about it. Well, first and foremost, major, major congratulations on your black lambskin mini. I think that's awesome. Uh, but when it comes to lambskin, it is more porous and it is prone to staining. Uh, now I have heard a couple of different things. I've heard some people, have uh, used their lambskin bags. Uh, they were caught in the rain and they did end up getting some water spots and those water spots started to uh, disappear as, a, as the hours went by, which I think is awesome. I've also heard of other people that were caught in the rain with their lambskin bags and uh, those same water spots didn't go away. They ended up being a lot more noticeable as time has gone by. You know, so in general, uh, when it comes to lambskin, I just prefer not to use it if there's a chance of rain, if it is raining, just because I don't want to have any type of staining happen on the handbag. And that's why I end up going for the caviar leather because it is a lot more carefree. And uh, again, I don't have to worry about those water stains. If I do get water on caviar leather, it ends up just kind of beating right off type of thing. Uh, now, even though I haven't had any water stains um, on any of my handbags, I have had water stains on my uh, white lambskin espadrilles. Um, now, I don't know if you guys are going to be able to see it or not because this lighting is terrible. Anytime I bring something that's white up to the camera, it always kind of makes it darker. But um, I do have some water stains right, right here right here, right here, right here. Um, again, I don't know if you're gonna be able to see it or not. It's a lot more noticeable in real life, um, but I didn't get caught in the rain, but someone thought it was a great idea to jump in some puddles um, with these shoes, and that is why, <laughs> that is why I have some staining on there. So um, I did try to pat it dry with like a, a white, mi uh, white uh, microfiber cloth, and 
nothing. It didn't, um, nothing happened. It almost seemed like it just kind of absorbed it even more. Uh, and I didn't try to rub it out either because of that. So I can definitely end up seeing them again. I don't know if you guys can see them or not, but, uh, in general with lambskin, because of the material, um, it just ends up showing those water stains either a little bit more or a little bit less, depending on the experience that someone has had. Uh, but in my experience, it just, um, it didn't go away. I can end up seeing those uh, those spots on there. But I would love to hear you guys' thoughts when it comes to lambskin. Uh, have you you know have you used it? Have you been caught in the rain with it? Um, I think it is a beautiful beautiful material. I just feel like it's one of those things. Uh, it's one of those materials that I would prefer not to use in the rain because of that. But other than that, I think um, I think it is absolutely fantastic. So once again, major major congratulations on your many. Enjoy it to the fullest. So I don't know if this ends up helping you out, but fabulous fabulous question. Next question from Kate Ford. Would you purchase the Celine Nano luggage tote in a different color other than black? All right, so I did bring it out so we have a little bit more eye candy. And would I add this bag in a different color? Absolutely, I would. Absolutely. I have thought about, I have been tempted about adding either the red, they have terracotta, this beautiful uh, gray coal, whatever it is. Uh, they have a metallic silver that I love. I also really love the tricolor. I never thought that I would say that, uh, but I like the tricolor because I feel like it really ends up enhancing the little robot face, usually because the color, um, you know, the, the handles and the, and the little zipper here, they're black, so I feel like you can see it, <laughs> see it a little bit more. I know some people don't like it, but I think it's super cute, but yes, absolutely, I have been tempted to to get you know to get a different color um but i do try to refrain from doing that because i have a tendency when i really like something i have a tendency of wanting to buy it in multiple colors uh so i try not <laughs> i try not to do that just so that way i can give a chance to a different fashion house or a different silhouette because i feel like if i um <laughs> if i kind of gave into that my collection would consist of reissues, never fulls, and Selena no luggage totes for sure. So I really have to just, all right, pump the brakes, but I think they have so many beautiful colors. Um, that gray that I was talking about or that coal I think is just stunning. Um, and I like the fact that they also have different types of hardware. Like sometimes it's uh, it's the gold, uh, sometimes it's the gold or the antique gold or the silver. Uh, but I just think that this is such a cute bag you know, and the, the material is just wonderful and it's so incredibly durable. So yes, 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 absolutely. But I gotta, <laughs> I gotta stop. Are you guys like that as well? When you really like something, you just want to buy multiples. I do that with lip glosses too. I mean, that should be no surprise <laughs> because I feel like I continuously buy the same thing over and over and over again. Uh, but anyways, that I digress. I'm veering off subject, but uh, yes, to answer your question, absolutely, I would go for another color um, when it comes to the beautiful Celine Nano Luggage Tote. So great question, and hopefully I was able to answer it. And the last question from Brianna, hopefully I said that correctly. Have you thought any more about growing out your grays? If not, what holds you back the most? Do you fear how you will be perceived? Um, okay, so have I thought any more about growing out my grays? I don't know if you guys ended up watching my Get Ready With Me or my Chit Chat video a couple of weeks ago. I talked about going gray quite a bit on there because I started to go gray at a young age. I mostly have gray here and here, and I've been dyeing my hair for forever. Uh, and I'm still kind of 50-50 on whether or not I want to move forward with growing them out. And and the thing that ends up holding me back the most is the fact that I have zero patience. Um, and with the demarcation line, I feel like it is going to drive me nuts, especially since I have long hair. And I feel like if I grow it out, it's going to take an eternity for it to, uh, to for it to fully grow out, you know. And like I said, right now it's okay because it's not too bad. Uh, but I feel like if it gets to here it'll end up just driving me nuts. You know, just that patience, zero, zero patience for it. And it's funny because sometimes I sit there and I'm like, you know what, I pump myself up. I'm like, I'm gonna do this, I'm gonna do this, I'm gonna grow it out, you know, it is what it is. And then I go right back 
to dyeing it, you know? So I have tried, but I have failed miserably every single time. And uh, do I fear of how I will be perceived? Absolutely not. I mean, I have laugh lines. I have wrinkles. I have crow's feet. I mean, check this guy out. This guy is intense. You guys see it. Um, I am no spring chicken and I'm okay with the, <laughs> with the, you know, with what I have. These are my beauty marks. And just, um, just like I feel about handbags with beauty marks, I feel like my face tells a story. I know that might sound so corny, but it tells a story and I embrace them. Uh, but when it comes to the grays, I feel the same way. I think gray hair is beautiful, you know, and just the, the natural process of aging, I think is beautiful. Uh, and if there was a way for me to strip out all of the, the hair color that I have without damaging it and having my natural hair color with my grays, I would do it in a heartbeat. Unfortunately, that's not something that, uh, you know, that I can do, but, um, no, I think, uh, I think that grays are beautiful and I would definitely, definitely be rocking them to, to match my wrinkles, to match my laugh lines and my crow's feet and all that good stuff. Um, it's just the patience. I lack the patience to let it grow out, to let it transition because of the, of that demarcation line. You know, I just, I don't want to, I don't want to see it. It's going to, it's going to drive me nuts. And like I said before, I pump myself up and I'm like, yes, yes, yes. And nothing nothing, absolutely nothing. So hopefully I end up getting the patience. I end up finding the patience either in a couple of weeks or a couple of months or a couple of years. So that way I can end up uh, rocking my grays. But as of right now, no, <laughs> I don't see it happening. I don't know, but I turn to you guys. What about you? For those of you that have grays, uh, whether you started to go gray at a younger age or if you have grays now, and um, how do you feel about them? Do you prefer to cover them up? Are you in the process of transitioning as well? And if you haven't, what holds you back? Let us know in the comment section down below. Um, but um, yeah, I just, I feel like when I see people that have like that strip of gray or it's all gray, it just looks absolutely stunning. Stunning. <laughs> and hopefully, hopefully I have, you know, something like that at some point in time. Although I feel like I might have a patch right here, which I'm waiting to see how, how intense it gets, because if it ends up being that patch, it might give me the extra <laughs> you know, push to do it. So I don't know. But anyways, let us know your thoughts in the comments section down below. But great question. And hopefully I was able to answer it. All right, you guys. So that does it for Minx Monday Q&A. I hope that you enjoyed it. And I hope I was able to help. You guys had some awesome questions this week. I hope that you're well. And I will see you in my next one. And as always, make it a fabulous day or not. The choice is yours. Have a great day.